Hello and welcome, this is Mel Skinner, and we're back with some more Xenonauts, and we're getting ready to assault the enemy UFO. Tricky thing is with these Corvettes is you really have to bust in here and be very aggressive with your move. So I'm going to stack up very aggressive, even though I know that they might have grenades and they, I might eat a grenade and, and die horribly. Uh, I am going to just set up this turn uh, for a big attack and hope that this goes to plan. Okay, uh, so that's going to be the setup. Hopefully we don't get charged by an alien and get killed. They happen. We'll have to see. Okay, let's going to open the door. Okay, we see an enemy. At which point I could throw a grenade or I could charge him. Now, I do have to realize that I will get a... Uh, Turn shot here. I'm just going to throw the grenade at him. I think that's the, the right course of action. And we bungled grenades so far. But uh, let's take our time with this sucker. And if we can continue to take enemies out just by throwing grenades at them continuously, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, speaking of which, we need to switch over to another grenade type. All right, well, there's a turn. I don't know how long it's going to take for this to clear out. It hasn't cleared yet, so we're going to wait. It's going to take as many turns as it takes. Okay, it still needs to clear. Okay, did another alien walk into it? Okay, it's still there, but next turn it should be clear, I'm hoping. Okay. Still there. Sometimes the smoke can be stubborn. Okay, it's there, but we can maybe walk around it. All right, let's start moving in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick a side and we're just going to assault that side. So I think we're going to go for the right side here because I've already moved towards it. Um... Actually, it would take me less action points to get to this door, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, alternatively, we can move straight ahead, but that's a little bit trickier to pull off, I think. Okay, uh, nothing so far. Let's step through the door. Okay, we're going to look to this side. Nothing. Look to this side. Nothing. Okay. I think a good option here... We've charged in. Now the option, I think, is we, we get into a semblance of cover. So... I'm going to set myself up here... Okay, I think we may have saw an enemy. No, not quite. So we're in cover. Now I have to keep in mind, grenades can kill me. So I have to set up so that my men are not right next to each other. So we're going to move here. Go through this door. I'm going to jump over this railing. And in behind here. That will give me the most cover I could possibly have. Alternatively, I just jump here and turn around. Now, I still think this is the right call. Give me the most cover I can have. Okay, we're going to take an E. I'll get at least one shotgun blast off, so if they try and come in here or over here, we've got a shotgun blast for them. Okay, my other option now... I do not want to keep these guys together, so I have to uh, think this through. So I could move here. I wouldn't want to move through the smoke, but I could move there, take a knee, turn, see what's there, see if we can get a shot off, and just hope that the cover that we have uh, holds out. Alternatively, I've already got two dug in. Maybe we hold where we are and see what the enemy do. Because to be totally honest with you, the enemy might come in this room to try and get at me, and that might give me an opportunity to uh, assault them here. So we're going to close the door. I will prevent my sniper and rifleman from getting off reaction shots, but uh, we've seen how good my sniper is at that in the past. Would have been nice maybe to close this door, because the alien now can just stand in here and fire across at me here. And I don't have the shield facing the right way for that. So, hindsight 2020, but uh, let's go ahead and end the turn anyway. Okay. Exactly what I thought would happen just happened. I can't see the enemy, though. 
There they are. Okay. Go ahead and throw a grenade in here. You know what? If I couldn't see them, that's still good for me, right? So let's uh, cancel this for now. As long as I have enough points to throw a grenade, how much was that going to be? It was 41. Uh, I'm going to need quite a few action points to spin around, but I would prefer this thing not to be able to spin around on me. So there, made 44. 85% looks good. Not so good. Yeah, I don't think it covered it at all. And we don't have any action points to run away, so that went really well. Okay, well, we can still run over to it, pop the door, and kill it. Uh, either way, that would have been nice to have worked in my favor, but... Okay. I don't know if this is smart, but I'm going to try. Hello. You like to be shot in the face? How about now? All right. We're going to jump back over. Take an E. Face that way. Now, that worked pretty well. Kind of. <laughs> that could have gone better. Our grenade tosses have just not been on, on, uh, on target at all. And an alien might still be able to pop a door here and shoot this guy, or pop a door here. Uh, let's let's be reactive here, rather than allow them to take the initiative. Okay, so I don't see anything. So they'd have to pop the door and step out to come after this guy. As far as I can see. Alright, we'll take an E here. I don't think it's going to get any better. Now the smoke here should block this door from them just being able to run across. I guess that's technically possible, but, uh... Alright. So I don't know how many enemy are left. Just have to see. Let's end turn. Okay, he did just... Dig that, exactly that. He just walked right across. Alright, well, that that's one way to end uh, an assault. Have it be a total and complete mess. <laughs> We did lose the Hunter Scout car, which is, is kind of expensive. It's going to be uh, a little bit of work to replace that. But hey, we've got our um, workshop free. So that's what we're going to do, I guess. All right. Well, uh, we get 75000 Not too bad. Uh, we did get a, um, a guard. We did not get a... It might have been their officer, honestly. We did recover a Corvette data core, so that's good. Um, nothing saying about whatever that vehicle was. Maybe it's something we'll see later. All right. Did get a medal here, and nobody leveled up, but that's okay. I don't know if you go any further than Captain, to be totally honest with you. I mean, we still get uh, points either way, so that's, that, you know, we're still advancing. Okay. So let's get into the workshop here. And go to vehicle, and we're going to get our Hunter Scout car, commence project, and all 15. So, two days, 16 hours. It's going to be the time schedule for that. Uh, normally, those cost 60000 I guess it's not too bad. And it's better than losing a soldier. Okay, let's go ahead and... So, Charlie 2 is going to probably take over for the meantime, because they actually have a Hunter Scout car. And uh, let's go ahead and progress time here. Back in the base. Uh, let's just take a look real quick at the injury that we sustained. So that was over here, 74%. We do have other people that we can replace that person with. So that would have been a rifleman. We have we have replacement rifleman, I'm sure. As a matter of fact, Maxim uh, Pavlov here could be a sniper. Uh, as a matter of fact, why do we not have him assigned? He seems awesome. Maybe maybe some some reason. I don't, I don't know. About the sniper we're using now. Over in Charlie 1. Charlie 1, Charlie 1, Sniper. Um, yeah, this Sniper's better than that. I mean, she's still good, though. So what about my other team? Um, Charlie 2, do you have a Sniper? Let's go through. Uh, sniper, we do. Oh, did I misread that? What about you? Oh, these guys are, like, pretty equal. Uh, Maxim Pavlov is, is fantastic. Uh, still, I'm not exactly sure... 
why I'm not using him other than I just already have a sniper, I guess. Uh, we could use him in a different role, though. We could make him a rifleman or something. So, you know, while I'm here and I'm thinking about it, didn't we do a two sniper team somewhere? We could do that. Um, who's somebody that kind of sucks? Uh, so we have you are a rifleman that I mean, he also is very good on bravery and in just a lot of things. Okay, so you're one of the riflemen for Charlie 2. Um, strength, not necessarily great. It's weaker. Um, this guy's better than that, so we might as well keep him. Oh, except for the action points. That's the main thing that's a problem. Ryan Stevens has, has a lot of action points, but look at this, 82. That's amazing. Um, what about you? It's Charlie 1. You're, I mean, you're pretty good, too. Um, mostly strength being the big downside of uh, of this guy. You know what? I think we're going to get Maxim Pavlov to replace. So you're just going to be uh, unassigned, and we're going to have Maxim Pavlov enter Charlie 1. Uh, we might change his role uh, in the future, uh, depending on what we want, but it seems like Maxim Pavlov is just so much better than uh, Olivier here uh, by a big margin. Uh, the The... You know, strength is one thing. We're going to be able to carry a little bit more gear, so that's important. Uh, bravery is another. Although, Oliveira isn't too bad at that. And there might be somebody that this guy is better than that I'm just, like, I'm missing somewhere. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Oliveira here might be a good replacement for the, the wounded soldier uh, if we need, absolutely need, Charlie 1. We don't need Charlie 1, so for now, uh, we're just going to hold off on that. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, get back into uh, going through time, because I don't think there's anything else we need. We're just waiting for the end of the month and research projects, so we'll just keep going on with that. Okay, so we have a light drone wreckage. So this is the vehicle that we encountered. Um, is there anything here that we should pay attention to? Uh, small saucer-shaped drone uh, with a thruster air array mounted on the rear of the saucer. Okay, that's just mostly text. I'm sorry, flavor. Okay, allows it to move freely over obstacles. Important to know. Part of the drone is an alinium reactor, no larger than a man's fist. We assume the mass of alien circuitry that surrounds it is, in fact, the drone's electronic brain. Okay. So there's nobody inside it. The frontal part of the saucer is filled with a powerful scanner that can monitor almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum, giving these drones excellent sight range. We kind of saw that, pretty long range. The drone is armed with an unusual integrated weapon we have dubbed the Burst Cannon. The plasma genera generation array has been designed to emphasize rate of fire above all else, allowing it to fire extremely quickly, but leaving it underpowered even compared to the plasma pistol. A single shot would probably not even kill an unarmored civilian. As the shell of the drone itself is also not even thick enough to resist sustained small arms fire, I suspect, suspect that these units are disposable scout units. Okay, that, that kind of seems to uh, see go along with what we saw in that fight. It only took two shots to knock it out, so... Okay, good to know, but it could be devastating at close range, because the number of shots it fired, yeah, one shot's not going to kill you, but uh, if it opens up on you point-blank range, I think it's going to maul you pretty bad. It, yeah, maybe our armor can, can resist it, I don't know. All right, good to know. Doesn't seem to be any research projects spawning from that, so we're just going to continue forward here. All right, items received. We have production of jackal armor is finished. Let's go to that base, so that's going to be over in hole number two here. Where we don't really have any other projects we can work on at the moment. We have 92,000. We could work on more base improvements, like, for example, a garage. But I'm going to hold off on that for now, because right now our, our upkeep costs are, are very, very high. And I would like to do something about that so that we're not just treading water, we're actually making income. So uh, let's just go ahead and go forward at this moment, especially as we are working on a project with that Hunter Scout car. More money will uh, be used for that. And again, we're so close here. So let's go ahead and uh, move forward here. And I'm really just looking for some of the upgrades. Uh, we need to upgrade our weapons. Um, and there we go. Uh, so we have an alien plasma technology. 
Okay, in the meantime, our efforts would be better focused on the development of battlefield laser technology. We have learned enough from studying the powers, distribution, and cooling systems of the alien weapons that I believe I can replicate them in our own designs, making building man-portable laser weapons from these new alien materials a theoretical possibility. So I'm hoping we either have those or, yeah, we have laser weaponry. Okay, let's go to the research screen. We need to work on that very soon um, because we are, in my opinion, behind on that. Unfortunately, we are now poor on that. Let's see. Get away with scientists from here. Okay, it still says excellent. So just move some scientists around. So we've got average, average, you know, excellent. I really want that wolf battle armor. That's going to improve our survivability. But we need to start worrying about uh, offensive potential. So laser weaponry is going to be really important here. A lot of uh, technology you have to go through to add before you actually get anything out of it, though. So... Hey, okay, away we go. With that, uh, we're going to get the wolf battle armor hopefully very soon. Uh, it will give me something to do with my one workshop. Getting a little bit of a reprieve. That actually makes me nervous sometimes because it seems when you get the reprieve, you also get... Okay, production of hunter scout car. Let's uh, go to the vehicle. Okay, so you are going to be assigned to... One. All right, so Charlie One's more or less ready to go. How are we doing on the injuries? So you're still injured, but 90%. Okay. Again, we have a couple extra people here, so uh, it's not that big of a deal. We can get somebody in there. I did hire a soldier, did I not? Yeah, and I was thinking about hiring Patrick, perhaps. We're still waiting on that person to show up. But eventually, we are going to get better. Uh, might as well wait until the research project is actually being worked on, though. Okay. Following items has arrived. So we have our new soldier. Good to see. Okay. Continue forward. And finally, we have wolf battle armor. Wow, that looks uh, pretty fancy. Okay, the wolf battle armor is a direct replacement for the jackal combat armor, using the remarkable properties of alien alloys to provide extra protection to our men in combat. Each individual suit requires a large amount of money and alien alloys to fabricate in our workshop, so that's new. Uh, but they should dramatically increase the combat effectiveness of our men. Wolf armor consists of numerous parts and unarmored helmet... I'm sorry, an armored helmet with a reinforced visor, so on and so forth. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, none of this appears to have dramatically improved the mood of our soldiers. Either. Okay. So the important thing is this. How different is it? Okay, so it seems to be about double as good. Uh, we don't have any chemical defenses, but it gives us twice as much. It does weigh more. Um... Doesn't seem to affect anything. Oops. Not what I want to do. Doesn't seem to affect anything else. Okay. So, it's going to be a little bit heavier, but it is going to uh, give us uh, quite a bit more protection. So, new project available. Buzzard jumpsuit. So, I'm going to assume that is going up and up in the armor. I'm not going to research that just yet, though. Instead, we're going to research something else. Uh, let's go after the Reaper analysis. I'd like to get uh whatever we can get out of this usually you get some kind of damage bonus and then probably directional thrusters is going to be the next thing i work on um so reaper analysis we only have five on that but that's that's going to be what it is for now once we have our second lab constructed we'll probably work on directional thrusters from that lab put all of our scientists into that and we'll go from there okay so let's go over to the, let's see, armor. Yes, it's going to cost 40,000, so it's uh, twice as much. And we need uh, required four of 128. So we have enough alien alloys to make, uh, I'm going to go with six for now. And all 15, so that's going to take 16 days to produce, but hopefully we can produce some because assaulters, uh, shields, uh, those kind of guys, those need the armor first. And it's okay if we don't get uh, quite as many, but this will be enough for one squad. So let's get going on that. Now, one thing I believe you can do, if I'm correct, is I think you can sell. Yeah, you can sell some of your stuff and uh, 
get some cash out of that. So I think that's eventually how you're supposed to go forward is you're supposed to uh, sell alien technology because uh, at one point you're going to your your base is going to cost you too much to maintain. All the stuff you have is going to cost you too much to maintain. I think that's how it's supposed to go. Uh, but in any case, uh, we're going to keep a hold of this stuff for now because, I mean, it's still valuable. And, and hell, this Jackal armor, it's 10,000 value. And uh, if we're going to be replacing it with better armor, I mean, right there, we, we can get a good chunk of cash back. Now, it costs us more than that to build in the first place, though. So you're not really getting a good return on investment. But, you know, once it becomes obsolete, it becomes obsolete. All right, well, with that being said, this is a good point to go ahead and put a cut in the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.